spend 1.3% of world's electricity running cloud computing. The projection is that we'll need a thousand times more cloud computing in about 10 years from today. That's 1,300% of world's electricity. Starting in 2002, cancer began to kill more people every year than AIDS, malaria, and TB combined. And that's only gotten worse. Even here in the US, it's approaching the number one killer, higher than cardiovascular disease. I'd like to say water is sort of the, the one energy problem that could kill you. Two billion people in the world today do not have regular access to clean drinking water. Within the next couple of decades, that's expected to go up to four billion. MIT is a place where we think about solving problems in our society today, and we have a responsibility to actually come up with solutions and to show that science and engineering and technology can actually provide solutions. Nanoscale happens to be the operative unit if we can control it, we can build the world we want. It's a natural platform for innovation and thinking about growing and transforming non-biological materials, but giving them some of the best properties of biology. You think about the periodic table, it's as if you've given that whole table a completely new dimension. Over the past couple of decades, the equipment and the experimental techniques at micro and nanoscales have evolved I can't, even, <laughs> I can't even tell you how much they've evolved. We can see things now that we couldn't have even imagined looking at 20 years ago. Our present facilities are twice as busy than any other research lab in the world. Opening MIT Nano will enable us to fulfill our desire to be even more productive. Innovation occurs when you get unusual pairings or unusual collaborations. It's about sharing ideas, it's about working together to push the boundaries of what's possible. It's about what we can do as a community to make a difference. Having a fabrication facility right at the heart of the campus really tells us that we are here to prototype and make things. The way discoveries happen is that engineers actually tinker. We like to play, we like to invent, and so we might have one idea in mind and discover something completely different that has another application. MIT Nano will house the most complex set of nanotechnology tools ever assembled in a single place. Tools that none of the individual faculty can afford because they're too expensive to maintain. But as a group of 2,000 users, we can certainly maintain it as a central facility. When you get access to those state-of-the-art tools, you really start thinking big. You have this spiral of technology development, fundamental science technology development that can start a real snowball effect. This is the time to build this building because this is the time when the technology is really going to leap forward. What we do is really on the edge of science and fiction. And if we make one more step, if we can make this particle a little bit more magnetic or a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, then maybe we will be able to really change the way we interact with human nervous system. We can envision a future where a large fraction, maybe as much as 20 or 30 percent of our chemicals, actually come now from biology as opposed to from petroleum. One of the dreams at MIT is to design what would be the first interplanetary small satellite to explore uh, the moon or explore uh, Mars or uh, an asteroid. That would be unheard of. MIT attracts people who see their mission to be beyond academic pursuits. Mind and hand symbolizes what we do. MIT Nano epitomizes MIT's mission. We think about ideas. We reduce them to practice, and then we give them to the world outside.